Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. All right, we're we're let me uh, let me sort of preference all preference all this uh, because uh, right now we're all under the quarantine of uh, the coronavirus nineteen uh, situation. Uh, bites would not be a really good thing right now. Not that any day bites are a good thing. Um, so only the essential snakes are getting fed, uh, the baby snakes, the adult snakes are be being cut back, but unfortunately this week is a week that most of them should be fed. So we're being very careful and, you know, these cages will need to be cleaned at some point. Are you interested in that? Huh? All right, I'm just going to leave it and not mess with it because uh, it will eat it or it won't regardless. At some point in the next 24 hours, its cage will need to be cleaned. This one, it looks like a bit of a disaster, uh, but we'll offer him something to eat. He looks like he's going into shed and he looks like he's hungry anyway. So... We're going to pin them rather than use the uh, stick um, because the stick sometimes pulls the cage open while we, uh, uh, while we pull them. And they're big enough that it's, you know, there's very little chance they're going to squeeze out. Yeah, well, it's not the squeezing out. It's just that, you know, if they're pushing on the top and they push on the front at the same time, there is a small chance that they could push it to the point where they could get out. Here's one of the remaining coral cobras somewhere in here. Um, this one will usually eat right off the tongue, so if I could just find her. Here she is. Oh yes, you're up to your, your usual self, huh? You want this to eat, huh? Or are you just going to be a A crazy snake today. Are you in shed or going into shed, huh? All right, I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to mess with her. Either she's going to eat it or not. We'll have to clean those, yes, uh, a little later anyway. Coral cobras will get a stick because those are escape artists. Number five, um, he has only eaten uh, geckos, but we're going to try to get him transitioned over. Um, I think the e Echisosalatus got fed last week, so they're not going to get fed this week. The Sahara Sand Vipers did not get fed last week, so they will get fed this week. Um, these guys could probably go some length of time without food, but I will feed them anyway. She Okay, she's been here for a long time. She has never taken anything off the forceps. Uh, she just gets left food behind. And most of the time it is, uh, has disappeared uh, when I've checked later. Um, now I'm not certain I have... S These were what I consider to be a bit big for the other sand vipers. So we're going to... We're going to give them something later. Um, let's go to... These guys were fed last week. Oh, there. This is a good old poop face who almost never refuses a meal. <laughs> um, the others we're going to have to tease... The other males are going to have to tease feed for certain. And this is, this is the 
<laughs> the male that it, that eats and identifies like a female. <laughs> yep. Um, so that's never a problem. Um, these two are recent uh, imports. Um, the one on the right only has been eating live, and right now I don't know if I can get any any live mice. So it will either eat or it won't, or I will have to uh, uh, take care of it by some other means. This one um, is <laughs> pretty chow ready, uh, so we're just gonna let it go. Um, this one is in the way back, and we'll probably not eat, so I'm not going to offer it. Uh, we'll give it something later. Alright, so we're just going to leave that up there, and hopefully it eats it. If not, uh, it's the brakes. However, it really sort of bothers me that I'm wasting resources when they don't eat. Oh, you look excited to eat. Huh? Oh, yeah. There we go. There's a happy camper. You wouldn't want that to be your finger instead of that mouse uh, rump. Uh, uh, that is a serious little snake uh, that causes lots of death and misery in West Africa from, from where it's from. Uh, it's the West African sawscale viper. Uh, bad customer. Fortunately, uh, there's some really good antivenins. Uh, you know, one vial of uh, the South African Ekis antivenin works pretty well. There's something called Ekis tabs that uh, was developed uh, with, uh, at the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, which works very well. Uh, there's also another product uh, called uh, uh, InnoSerp, uh, which actually has venoms from like four different species of, uh, of Echis and has, it's sort of a Pan-African uh, Echis antivenin. and um, it has the broadest uh, coverage and again, uh, generally one vial does it and you're cured. So let's see here in a moment, number three, and of course because I, I'm not an octopus, although a lot of times I wish I was an octopus, I, it's a little difficult to uh, juggle things. Uh, oh, you look excited. Oh, you're even hunting. You're even hunting. Oh, you killed it. Good for you, huh? How about that? Mm. You have got to be a female to do that. So, all right, we'll just let it, let it go and uh, and not bother it. Okay, so now these guys haven't been fed in like three weeks, so I'm sure they're going to be excited to get something to eat. That's the Sahara sand vipers or Abyssinian viper. Um, of course, this is the big girl. Um, and we never know where her pointy end is. Um, she's quite stealthy, so give me a moment here, and I will not stick my face too close, but generally speaking, I can come up with the pointy end uh, uh, after scanning for a few minutes or so. Um, you might have me stumped this time because I don't know if that end in the back there is uh, where the head is or uh, the body comes around this way. Um, normally you can see their eyes. Maybe one of the other ones will demonstrate. But I'm not going to disturb her. I'm just going to leave this in here because that's her normal modus operandi. And she likes to eat in private and not under the uh, watchful eye of the camera. So we'll go on to uh, the other f three that are left. 
and this is another girl and and she she has no fear of the camera at all <laughs> and as you can see uh, she quite happily took that uh, I'm sure her, her tummy's been growling for a while now um, uh, because of the crisis and the questionable availability of rodents and stuff uh, everybody's had their uh, uh, their food rations stretched out. Um, only the elapids that move about and burn a lot more calories than uh, the viperids, uh, those guys still are getting something, a little something on a weekly basis, but some of these animals I'm stretching out to, to two weeks or even beyond that sometimes. Um, well, considering you haven't eaten in a couple of weeks, let me give you something a little bit more substantial uh, uh, than one of the smaller pinks that are in here. This is a male. Hi, bud. Do you want this, huh? Do you want this? Oh, I thought you might. And, and again, you know, I, I could have bred these. Uh, however, the babies are insanely small and difficult to get feeding. And... I don't know what I would do with them right now because, you know, I can't safely wrap my fingers around the, uh, you know, the heads of venomous snakes. There's a couple rare ones that I'm willing to risk and do it, do this, but, um, you know, for little baby sand vipers, if they didn't eat on their own, well, then that's, that's the breaks. Uh, um, so that's why I'm sort of not breeding them this year because uh, I can't take the chance of getting bit. Although the Inoserp uh, 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 Anivan and I have two different kinds. Uh, one does cover Serastes, so I do have Anivan for these guys now. How are you, huh? Unlike the big girl, you other guys are just hanging out on, on top. Oh, you missed. Huh? You want that? Huh? You want that? Is it going to get away? Oh, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Oh, you got plenty of shake and bake on that, huh? All right. Yeah, you can see that he's, he's thinning out a little bit when you start to see a little ridge line along their spine. Um, so I might step up, I might feed these guys again next week to, to just make sure that, uh, that we don't lose too much weight. Uh, horn pit vipers from Vietnam and uh, that region of the world. Uh, Protobothrops cornuda, cornutus. Um, <laughs> and, and this gal has taken to begging. She, I, I, did you sneak in here and crazy glue her to the glass? Because I don't think she's moved from there in quite some time. Um, oh. There you go. Now, she has a companion, another female that's back here hiding somewhere. And I guess I'm watching you. And... Uh, You've decided that you're not interested in eating today, huh? Alright. Well, that's your problem and not mine. Here you go, Mr. Snooty, the sharp nosed pit viper. Or the 100 pace snake, as he's known. They're from China and Vietnam and that region of the world, um, Taiwan, uh, even though mentioning that word makes the, uh, the people in uh, mainland China cringe. Uh, that's a finger, hand, and arm rotter. <laughs> uh, their venom is very purulitic, and people who get bit. Uh, uh, will lose flesh, uh, absolutely guaranteed if they get envenomated. Of course, their venom also causes significant coagulopathy, and the reason why they're called the 100 pace snakes is because people that get bit um, can only go 
a hundred paces and then they fall over supposedly dead. But in reality, there's proteins in the venom that actually dilate your blood vessels and cause a loss of blood pressure um, and you faint. Uh, generally speaking, uh, most of the time you will recover uh, after you go horizontal briefly. Um, um, they're not instantly fatal, uh, however, there are certainly instances where it can be instantly fatal because if your blood pressure doesn't recover, you don't, your brain doesn't perfuse, your heart doesn't perfuse, and you end up assuming room temperature. Hmm. Well, you caught me uh, in progress here. Uh, I'm going to change tubs uh, for the hump nose pit vipers, the Hypnoli Hypnoli, which are bad hombres. female is a little bit easier to work with than the male, but that's no guarantee that this is not uh, catastrophe in snake hockey. There you go. Up. Put your little snoot down. We'll give you some water after you uh, calm down. I try to keep snakes in the same arrangement, so if I pull open a cage, I'm, I have an idea of what's in that cage, even though <laughs> I may not necessarily glance at the label right away, but uh, it's always a good idea. I try to keep everything arranged in the same fashion this way. Uh, I know what I'm getting into. Um, in a previous segment of video, I moved the water cobras across the way. This rack is almost completely empty. Um, I could actually uh, probably move them all over and shot an entire rack down, but uh, the Akis and these guys have a little bit of temp temperature difference uh, that I set them at, so you can see the female Chlorocobra is still looking for food, even though she got fed yesterday. The male was just up front also. Since I have to feed the male Hypnoli and he's not eating on his own, so I'm going to force feed him, I'll bring up a couple extra pinks for those guys. Uh, uh, they're growing and they're eating pretty well and they're a lapids. They're a little bit more active than the little piles of poo that just sit <laughs> there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, you know, make sure that they have an appropriate amount of food stuff. So, we're going to pause here for a second while I put some substrate in here and Mrs. Viper Keeper go gets uh, another water dish for this other little uh, uh, miracle of life and <laughs> caus causation of heart palpitations. Uh, um, get the same, a little so male. same sort of dish. Hello, dude. That's my last pair of baby coral cobras. Uh, hopefully. Uh, like I said in previous videos, uh, we're not trying to produce snakes this year because of uh, COVID and the difficulty getting baby snakes feeding. Uh, like for instance, the little hump knows the male, uh, I'm going to have to force feed him later, which is just no fun at all uh, for anyone involved. Uh, there's not really a good anti-venin. Uh, they think that Thai polyvalent uh, works pretty well on it. Uh, at least this comes from a laboratory study. There's no clinical data to support it. So, uh, you know, all bets are sort of off. Um, so, uh, if you could go get that for me, that would be Thanks. great. Let me place this water dish. Uh, he has it a tendency with the other water dish to sort of hide under it. Um, maybe I should grab a piece of cork bark to give him something to hide behind. Maybe he'll feel a little bit more comfortable uh, and eat better. So I'll be right back with that. Some water in this one for now. Uh, like I said, he's going to uh, get force fed a little later. Uh, the female is in here. Apply a little bit of water to hers. Okay, we know this guy 
is a problem. Oh, he's right by the water. Yes, he's right under the water dish. So, uh, I will uh, attempt to hook him, but he doesn't hook. He's just... Uh, there he goes, off to the races. Really squirmy. Um, so, unfortunately, we have to play rough. Um, there's no way to, <laughs> uh, to move him without uh, uh, having playing snake hockey with him, and that is a snake that I don't want to play snake hockey with because, unfortunately, if it looked like he was going to try get under something where I couldn't get him, I would have to just kill him outright, and I don't really want to do that. Yes, but I don't want a snake like that loose in the house. So. Yes, so, I mean, that's basically what it comes down to, folks. Uh, uh, if, if a snake looks like it's going to escape and not, you know, okay. I mean, if it's something big like, uh, you know, the asper or something, there's no place that that snake can go where it can get free uh, through any cracks. But a little guy like the Hypnoli, uh, it's a whole different story. Uh, I've worked really hard at sealing this room. Um, you can see the the foam down there in the cracks to fill little cracks. I've done everything I can possibly do to snake proof the house. Uh, small snakes are just can squeeze through incredible things. That's why I've got sticks under the coral culvers. That's to push their cage up so it seals against the lid because believe it or not, you know, this little tiny crack uh, they can get through, and they're there goes Sud. Stud. <laughs> Sud got fed, uh, but he's doing his normal crash and burn thing. Yes, this is his signature move. He climbs <laughs> up and then goes thud. <laughs> yes, and poor Slinky uh, has to endure this being his neighbor. Imagine having a uh, thud living above you. <laughs> I'm sure a few people have had to deal with uh, others that are like that uh, above them. That's, yes, yeah, very no rude and thoughtless. Noisy neighbors. Yes. So, okay, so that's all done. Uh, we'll move on to uh, some other cleaning that needs to be done.